must go One step ahead of the next And we'll get there nice and slow Hello, how are we? It's week five of the Global Music Match Week And last week you would have noticed I was chatting to this wonderful lady who is all the way in Canada. She calls Prince Edward Island home. And she is one of uh, Canada's premier songwriters. And it's in her blood because she's the daughter of the incredible Jean McClellan. Uh, this is Catherine McClellan. This is where I get to interview Catherine. I get to do this part, which is really exciting. Hey, Catherine, how are you? I'm great, Colin. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Not l long time no see. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Now, uh, as we know, as we dis discussed last week, uh, we've sort of been crossing paths. We've been in like those ships in the night, like you know, where we've been in the same place, uh, but we haven't really been able to catch up. Now, I've got to be honest. Uh, I am a total fanboy. I am like. You know, everybody who knows me back here and, and Alice and, and, and like I've, I've been asking advice, how do you interview somebody that you are a bit of a fan without looking like a twat, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm a big fan too. I am <laughs> so happy we get a chance to talk. <laughs> Great. So I'm, I'm just going to go diving right into it because I feel that that's probably the best way to do it. So as I said, you've, you've, you grow, you've grown up in, in, in Prince Edward Island, you know. Uh, you've, be, you, you, you've been there most of your life. Can you explain the journey and why it's such a dear place to your soul and why it's important that your, your, your daughter grows up there as well? It's a really magical island. Um, it's, it's very gentle. It, it's not really a, a rugged landscape like there are other nearby places like Cape Breton Island, which um, uh, is much more rugged, more mountainous. And, and But here it's like soft white sand on the beaches and pastoral kind of fields. It reminds me a bit of Ireland, actually, in, in a way. Um, and there's like just so much music here and so much feeling of community. Um, I just can't imagine... I don't know. I, you know, as a teenager, everybody wants to get away from where they're from. Um, and you did that. Uh, you got as far away as you can go pretty much, <laughs> but I kept coming back to the Island and, um, here I am. And, and you're right. My daughter's growing up here and, and, um, yeah, it's just, it is a magical place. I hope that you get to come and visit. With growing up in, in Canada and being a songwriter in Canada, I feel there's something special in the water that is like you've got this really if you could bottle it and sell it to other parts of the world that would just make the world a better place what is it that really inspires you when it comes to your songwriting what is it the thing that you know that when you're in your day doing whatever it is hanging out with your daughter hanging out with your, and then it's just that moment bang what are the things that inspire you to write I think most of my songs have begun with feelings, you know, like there, it's like a feeling inside of me. There's something that needs to come out. And I, as a kid, I was uh, really, really shy and um, I found it hard to communicate and to, to like tell people how I felt or what was going on in my brain. Um, and so songwriting became a tool for that. And it's been really helpful, it, you know, um, it's really helped me through life. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm, thinking or feeling until it comes out on the page. And so, so more and more, I'm trying to tell other people's stories, not just my own interior ones. Um, but I find the landscape around me, and it doesn't have to be just here in Prince Edward Island, but wherever I am, there's a different feeling and a different energy. And, you know, you can really, I feel like landscape is just the perfect metaphor for, um, for songs that, you know, you can really, um, use it in lyrical ways that, um, yeah, I, I think there's something really about nature and landscapes that really influences how I, how I write and what I write about. So can we take a step back in time to possibly the first song that you wrote that really impacted you personally? Oh, well, first I thought you were going to ask me my first song I ever wrote, <laughs> which well, I, I don't really, well. 
it wasn't it wasn't very good um but um that's a tough question because i think a lot of my songs were basically the same which was like um well you know tumultuous teenage years that there's enough in there to write for a long time but also um my dad died when i was uh 14 and so I was just grappling as a shy kid and a kid who had lost her dad. I was really grappling with how to talk about those things. And so, yeah, the, the first probably hundred songs I wrote were, were pretty sad. And, um, <laughs> I, I always wanted to write like a big pop hit or something, but I never quite made it there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know the, the first one that really, um, yeah, I don't, I can't pinpoint one. I just remember this sort of feeling of um, just the growth of changing from singing other people's songs to singing my own songs and how powerful that became for me. And um, starting to sing on stages and like my words were coming out of my mouth to an audience that was actually listening. <laughs> I just thought I've stumbled upon something here. Yeah. <laughs> and when people would connect with what I was singing, um, that was that was when it all made sense for me. All the dots were connected then. It was, I really knew that that was what I had to do with my life. Yeah, yeah, great. Yes, and and what was the name of the first song you ever wrote? Do you, do, do you know that one? Oh God. I don't even think it got as far as having a name, but I do remember s sitting like on my bed and singing the song. I didn't even know how to play guitar yet. And I, <laughs> my dad came in and he's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm working on a song. Do you want to hear it? And I think it was like, an anti-smoking song because we were probably learning about that in school but he yeah. encouraged me he did not tell me just how bad it was <laughs> yeah. with with me looking into everything that you've been doing and and all the the writing you've done you've done seven albums that, that is that correct you've done seven, seven i think so yeah, yeah seven albums <laughs> and you know the progression is that you came down to the uh your last album, which is a, now let me get this right, because you say it a certain way, uh, is it Coyote? Is that yeah. with an H? Now that you ask me, I don't know how I say it. Yeah, Coyote, <laughs> Coyote. Yeah, Coyote. <laughs> Coyote. Uh, which you completely, you self-produced that album. You That was your, that was you getting into the whole idea of expanding your your way of, of how you create and how you present your music. But how did you find creating that album to the other albums that you had made how did you how did you get to that point of wanting to self-produce i think um i think like you you want every record to be different and and to have something different to say and you know different instrumentation um this record for me i wanted it to speak a little bit more about the island that i live on and, and the culture here. There's a lot more of the kind of um, traditional music that's here, uh, just a slight vibe of that going through, like more fiddles and accordions. And um, But I also, I love every record I, I've made and they've all been experiments and trusting, you know, my music in other people's hands, but I've always been pretty hands-on for the most part. Um, and, the last couple records, the tribute record I made to my dad, I was so busy that I basically would just come home and uh, sing the vocals and then go away again. So I felt very detached from that record. Mm -hmm. And the record before that, I was highly involved in it, but um, my partner at the time, who was also my guitar player and who produced that record, um, he really got behind it and spent months um, in a little cabin kind of working on arrangements. And so he pu poured his heart and soul into that and which was really beautiful. I'm very proud of that record, The Raven Sun. Mm. Um, but this record, you know, I had just broken up with that person and um, he still, he played on the record guitar a lot. It's great. Um, but I really wanted to make sure that, um, maybe it's an age thing, but um, I just wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it and not, um, let anybody else tell me how my album should sound. <laughs> and that was really liberating for me. It felt um, a little bit rebellious. <laughs> which, which I feel that uh, as a, a level of, uh, of growing when we, we, we basically want to take something 
and completely have an ownership over it. Like, you know, I, one of the things that I've had to learn in my life recent, recent years is letting go, to, to let go. But then I do understand there's a point that, that, that you have to regain something back when you let go of so much. You have to mm -hmm. regain something back. Uh, and I really, I really enjoyed I really enjoy watching songwriters who, you know, like some people will say they're a songwriter, but then you take control of what it is you're doing and you show your true self of who you mm -hmm. are. And I feel you did that really beautifully in, in the album. Thank I you. think that was beautifully done. But you're, a, you're an advocate for suicide prevention, part of the global music matches that we've been really connecting with one another and showing a lot more of a personal side with one another. And, through through that, you had a song that you you did a video for, and it was all about uh, talking and making sure we 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 have a space. You feel safe enough to communicate if you're not feeling connected, and you mm -hmm. are very much an advocate for for suicide prevention. Can can you enlighten us a bit more about that and 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 wh where that comes from? Yeah. Um, well. Um, my dad took his life um, in 95 and it's so crazy to think that um, at that time nobody talked about it and it really, um, you know, there's no easy way to get over such a loss like that and um, I felt so alone in it because nobody in our small town, a very religious kind of place and um, it just culturally a shameful thing to have happen in your family. And um, I think people were scared because they didn't want to talk to me about it because they thought it might hurt me to talk about it. Um, but I found as I got older and able to like use words better, <laughs> um, that the more I talked about whatever it was, whether it was my depression, my anxiety, or my dad's um, mental health, and then of course his suicide, the more I was able to open up about that, the more people would open up back to me and that um discourse um for one it made me feel like i wasn't alone and it made other people feel like they weren't alone in it either and in fact once i i went to a conference about suicide awareness and prevention and it was it was all um survivors of suicide people who had either attempted or who had lost someone to suicide and I, I can't even tell you how that changed my life just to be in a place where suddenly I wasn't the only one. And it's, it's just because people don't talk about it. You feel like you're alone in it. Um, but being there with all these beautiful people who had their stories to share and were very willing to share, um, it was really powerful and it changed my life and it allowed me to continue talking. Um, and of course you don't want to trigger people. Um, it can be hard for people to hear about it. Um, but I think, more important is the ability to just make sure people know that if they need to reach out, you know, there are lots of people that um, have an open door policy and I'm one of those people. <laughs> and how much does that reflect on your, how much does that reflect on your songwriting, that moment from having that feeling that you were not alone and that you could be open and have your door open for others? How did that affect your songwriting? from that point? I think it's made me more honest in my songwriting. Um, I'm not so afraid to, to write about some of those things. And um, it's also um, made, I think, my songwriting more joyful in a strange way. It's like I, I'm allowed to just be more completely myself. And because I know that the more myself I am, the more people um, see that and they see themselves in it like i i think you have that kind of personality too where you are just so yourself and you're so vibrant and alive and it makes people want to get to know you even more and um i think that yeah it's definitely changed my songwriting knowing that i that being me is enough in fact it's it's all i have so i might as well be fully me <laughs> <laughs> i think there's a level of bravery you know, I don't like fearless. I don't like the word fearless because I feel that that is walking in uh, stupidly into a situation. I believe mm -hmm. in bravery that, you know, with bravery, there has to be a level of knowledge and understanding and acceptance. And I feel that when people are 
open and honest and are being who they are truly, uh, it just uplifts me to like the bravery in that. And you know, I like I commend you. I, I, I commend you for that. I really do. I think the, the, to see your passion for that, that's something. Then I know that people will you will what you do will connect and it will help others like you know so thank you very much for, for that you thank know. you the song the storm is stunning i thank just you. oh my like you know the, it's a beautiful duet stunning can we talk about that can we please talk about that can we <laughs> discuss that yeah. and how your process is for that i think every uh songwriter right now is gonna have their um their COVID song as, as uh, it's, uh, you do with Stop. And um, I, this was that for me. I actually, I maybe wrote one other song in these last six months or so, but um, that song was handed to me on a silver platter. <laughs> it was uh, my, my dear friend, Tara McLean, who we basically grew up together. Um, our families lived together m- multiple times. And um, we've always wanted to work on something together and we never had the chance. And then it seems so funny because she's finally been back on the island more lately. And, uh, and then COVID happened and we were only, you know, an hour's drive apart, but we couldn't see each other. Um, and she woke up this, that morning with this feeling like um, suddenly all the people that we want to be with, we can't, even if they live down the street, you, you didn't, you weren't able to see them or have them in your house. And so many people have been, you know, separated by thousands and thousands of miles. So um, it's been, yeah, it's a ripe time for songwriting, I guess. <laughs> um, so she, she kind of wrote the first um, verse and a, a chorus and then called me up and she's like, what do you think of this? Do you want to help me with it? And <laughs> so we just did it by email and zoom chats and, Um, whatever way we could and we recorded it I mean she doesn't have a studio in her house um, so it was just really fun and then to get our friend Natalie to play cello on it was um, she's an amazing cellist but she does have terrible internet where she lives (laughs) so we were like driving around and like you know the USB stick is in the mailbox you can come pick it up and that sort of thing so (laughs) it was a real adventure and uh, yeah creativity born out of necessity i guess <laughs> it's, it's a it's a beautiful song i think that, that what i've you're right what i've noticed is that during this covid time there's been some great songwriting and great messages that i think that's the it's the message like you know i'm a great believer that melody uh like i was saying this to the captain when i interviewed the captain that the melody moves us you know when we're happy you know when we're happy we hear the melody but when we're sad we hear the lyrics, you know. So, so true. you know, and 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 I think that the happy medium is to have a semi-happy song where you can hear the lyrics and your body isn't moving too much, like you know. But <laughs> you know, that's a beautiful yeah. song. That song, and you know, there's Chris Matthews, who's also part of our group, wrote an incredible song. Like you know, I just yeah, yeah it's yeah, I just love how you know. I, I'm I'm waiting to see the compilation albums that come out of. COVID compilation albums. So I've got three questions, quick fire. uh, And you just, first thing that comes at you. uh, Favourite album? Joni Mitchell, Court and Spark, or maybe Hajira. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) What are you listening to at the moment? Colin Lilly. <laughs> Literally, that's what I've been listening to all day. <laughs> and uh, so vinyl or Spotify? Oh my God, a vinyl, of course. Although, you know, Spotify is handy when you're, you can't have vinyl in the car. Uh, so it brings me to the last question. And it's a, it's just a simple question about the global music, Max. It's just basically, you know, I, we are a group of, we're, it's the incredible how our group has come to get, like, w- when I saw the group, I was going, wow, wow. And then, but the way we've come together has been absolutely inspiring. It has, in, it has inspired me to, to like, 
embrace change more because if there's anything about this new COVID time, this new age that we're in, we have to be prepared to change straight away. We can't have, I can't have anyway, the idea that always change and take four months to come up with, uh, the, 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 to change. Like I have to now realize that I'm in a world that can change straight away. So how have you found this global match, music match? How have you found it? And what is the biggest thing you've learned from it? Okay, global music match for me came at a time when I was actually ready to just turn off the taps of social media. And, um, and, but I, I did want that connection between people. And so the first week or so when we were, the, there was like the behind the scenes week and, and then the first week with Chris Matthews, I was honestly a bit overwhelmed because it was so much after doing so little for so long, <laughs> it's like, okay, we're racing away now. And so um, after that initial shock passed, it has just been incredible meeting all of you and just feeling like I've actually made real new friends, even if we can't be in the same space together right now. It's just been the best. And I've been, you know, exposed to all of this amazing music. And um, I, like, I honestly don't, don't, yeah, the business side of it, whatever that is, it's just like this beautiful connection between humans and that has been amazing. So I am forever grateful that I got to be part of this project. So it's getting late now for you. It's, yeah. It's, late. it's been so good to talk with you. Thanks Colin for- Thank you so doing much. I really enjoyed it and I really look forward to us catching, having a cup of tea, shaking hands, having a, having a how are you? And I get to meet your beautiful partner again. And then uh, we can sing a song. That would be so great. Great. Awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> See ya. Thanks. Bye. Bye.